Um, I'm just going to stop here real quick because I have some announcements that need to be made. Uh, and so I, I, I'm, I have to just jump in because Deacon Moe's about to get us put in jail. <laughs> we already sneaking. <laughs> and he want to just go on. I had to tell the musicians, y'all could bring it down some. So <laughs> it is good to see everybody here today that is here. Amen. God is certainly good to us. Summer is coming and people are antsy. They're eager to get out. Um, and so we still want to practice social distancing. We still want to be careful um, I would feel horrible if someone here caught the virus from here and were hospitalized for an extended period of time or died. Uh, I think, I'm not sure which is worse. When you stay in the hospital for a month, when you come out, your life's over anyway because they're going to own you. It'll be hundreds of thousands of dollars that you're going to be in debt and you can't file bankruptcy on them. So you just be in trouble. So I, 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 just, I just want us to be careful, be cautious. Amen. I know this is a loving church. We do a lot of hugging, a lot of handshaking, a lot of being friendly with each other. Sometimes we just violate all kind of uh, personal space, be grinning up in each other's faces and, and just being nice. I don't have a problem with that, but right now, let's just be cool until they say it's okay for us to go back to being the way we are. Amen? Also, I, I want to make, by way of announcement, one of our saints has a service dog. Now, you can't just go up and play with the dog. So you may like Ula sitting there being real quiet. Watch him. Ula might get the Holy Ghost, y'all. <laughs> but... Um, it is, a service pet is not for people to come and play with, so don't do that. Don't put the sister on the spot and, and make her have to say, please don't touch the dog. Now, I know there's circumstances under which it can be done, but I think it's just safe for us to leave Ula alone, period. All right? She, she's real quiet. She's not going to do no barking and no whining unless the spirit gets to moving and you won't hear her no way. Amen. All right, that's not a license to come in with all kind of animals. She's got a medical note with hers. So don't come up in here with your cat and say, well, it's my service cat. They had a guy, and, and this is no kidding. They had a, a man in, in uh, Walmart and Niles had a snake wrapped around his neck, said it was a service pet. Okay, that's, that, yeah, that's just being silly. So I, I will, I, I will, do it as the Lord leads me. So don't, don't please don't get silly because I, I have to stop somebody and I don't want nobody telling me, well, you just showing favoritisms. No, I'm not. I, I deal with the case as the case comes. So I've been like that, though. I don't come up with rules on what people can and cannot wear. I don't do that. But if you get out of order, I'll pull you off to the side and talk to you case by case. I don't like getting up saying from now on, nobody in this church is going to wear suspenders. I don't like to do that. I'm not going to do that. But if you come in here with shorts on and suspenders, I'm going to tell you to take them both off. <laughs> Go home and put you some long pants on. <laughs> also, uh, I ordered some hand sanitizing stations. Now, not the, the big stand kind, but they hold quite a bit of the hand sanitizer. They'll be coming in. Some of them will be coming in by next Sunday, and some will be coming in two weeks after that. The bigger ones will come in two weeks after that. And I'm doing that because as we start to transition back into regular services, we've got the children downstairs, and um, since all of mine are grown, I can say this, Children have runny noses, they, they germy, and they touch everything. So we'll have hand sanitizer in all of the classrooms so the teachers can keep themselves safe from your kids. 
Now, we also have some bigger ones for the bathroom back in the back and one for where the pump station is right there. But the ones that I ordered are touchless, so you don't have to come up and put your hands on it. Just put your hand under it, and it'll dispense sanitizer for you. Yeah. But I want, I want everybody to feel safe. You know, if you go flying, if you fly anywhere, you got to go through TSA. That TSA is there to make you feel safe. Amen. But they ain't stopping trouble. If somebody really wants to do wrong, they're going to get past TSA. Amen. They've had a whole bunch of them do it and then get online and show what they did. They got arrested, but it proved the point that you can't stop somebody that wants to do wrong. Well, it's the same thing with the hand sanitizer. You can sanitize your hands all you want to, and God can let you die of a heart attack. So it, all we're doing is trying to make people feel comfortable, make them feel safe, but God's got your day. God has your day, and you're not going to escape it. I just don't want to be sick in the meantime. That's all. But when it's time, I can sanitize all I want. And that's not going to stop God from doing what he wants to do. All right. I think that's everything. I'm not, I'm not long on introductions. I listen to some of the preachers. They're really good at it. They're better at introductions than they are at preaching sometimes. But they sound so good. And I have tried. I have practiced. I have listened to how they do it. I just ain't got it in me. Say my amen. I'm just going to jump right into the word. Right. In the book of Numbers, chapter number 23, I kind of feel like uh, I was going to say, you know, I, I can't rip and run when I'm preaching. I can't just go from one side to the other and up and down the aisles. I can't do all of that. I'm having trouble breathing. And my lungs is giving me trouble, so I have to be really careful. I have to stand more still. But that's kind of like the guy that, that doesn't have a job, and, and he's saying, well, I'm sick right now. But you didn't have a job when you was well either. I wasn't running up and down the aisles and back and forth before I had lung troubles. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm stalling until you get to, I'm still hearing pages turning, but I'm not sure if it's Bible pages or notebook pages. Numbers chapter 23 and verse number 19. And then we're going to go to Psalm 58. Numbers 19 and verse 23 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it, or... Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And then in the book of Psalms, number 58, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> Psalm 58, verses 1 through 3. And it says, Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O ye congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Mm -hmm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Mm -hmm. And we'll just stop right there. I have a couple of more scriptures, but I will read them as we go. But I just would like to use for uh, a subject today the text here. Uh, God is not a man. All right. I think that's important for us to keep in mind because as humans, we often equate things in life based on what man can and cannot do. We measure things that way. We, we will say, well, if so-and-so can do it, then you can do it. If they can get good grades in school, you can get good grades in school. If they can play football, you can play football. That's just kind of a human nature thing, that we measure things by what people can and cannot do. I've never heard anyone say, listen, no one's ever flown before without the aid of something, but I believe you can do it. I've seen the birds fly. 
I think you can fly. We don't do that. We don't compare ourselves to unlike things. Man is arrogant, though. He, he thinks that if he can conceive something, he can do it. And if he can't conceive it, then it can't be done. We, we will make fun of people who come up with a new idea. Because it's something that's never been done before, we'll make fun of them until they do it. And I was thinking about Elon Musk and the SpaceX. They, he said, I, I watched him in an interview and he said his feelings were hurt because other astronauts had said he should leave space alone and let the big boys deal with it. But he has outdone NASA many times over. But see, they made fun of him because an individual had never done something like that before. And now that he's done it, everybody wants to race and jump in and get on the bandwagon and I always knew he could do this and he could do that. But at first, they was all making fun of him. So we have it in our minds that if it hasn't been done, then it can't be done. Man also thinks that if it's not possible for a man to do it, then it can't be done. But with God, all things are possible. That's what the scripture says. Man thinks that nothing and nobody can be trusted because man can't be trusted. Man, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I've heard that scripture misinterpreted or misapplied. That's not saying that uh, as you think it can be done. That's saying what you think about people is what's in you. Right. If you think everybody's a thief, it's because you're a thief. Right. If you think everybody's lying, it's because you're a liar. If you think everybody's cheating on their spouse, it's because it's in you to cheat on your spouse. So as a man thinketh in his heart, you always walking around suspicious is because you got something suspicious going on in you. All right, so I just I want us to understand that it is it is not accurate, it is not right to compare God to man. And I hear people do it all the time. They will say, Well, if the big man upstairs allows, he's not big, he fills all space. He's not a man. It says it right here. God is not a man. You can't compare him to a human. But that's not really what the message is about. It's not about us comparing God to a human. It's about something bigger than that. Men promise to do things and then they turn around and they disappoint you. People say, I'm going to do thus and so. And we get upset because they won't follow through with it. But it's because people come from the womb estranged. They come out telling lies. Babies lie. Before they can talk, they lie. They do. They come out, they'll be in the crib crying, and as soon as you pick them up, <laughs> they lie and nothing is wrong with them. They just want to be held. There are things that are just built into us. We know is right. We know is wrong. There's just some things in us. That's why, you, you know, you, you come into a room and the kid will do this. Because they know they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing. They might not know what it is. They just know, I've not been allowed to play with this before, so I'm probably going to get in trouble. They, a lot of times they don't even know how to talk, but they hide them. They know how, they know, they'll, they'll take something and slide it under the chair, under the couch. They'll do all kinds of things. Why? Because it's in human nature. It's in us to do wrong. It's in us to sin. We can't help it. Paul talked about that in the book of Romans. How I wanted to do what's right, but I couldn't do it. 
when I didn't want to do wrong, yeah. then I ended up doing wrong. Yeah. He says, well, how can I do what pleases God when it's in my very nature to displease God? How can I do that? And so he, he talks about this in the book of Psalms. He said, did you indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Are y'all telling the truth? Are you doing what's right? Or are you doing what makes you happy? All you have to do is turn your television on and watch the news. They're talking about stuff that make you feel good. But not necessarily what is right. They talk about things that... I just heard something yesterday on a, a, a newscast that would just kind of trip me out. It, it, they said this woman wanted to have an open relationship with her husband. She liked women too, but she wanted both. And she wanted it sometimes at the same time. She said, but I'm struggling with this because my husband is on the asexual spectrum. As if having one wife and one husband is some kind of spectrum, like if something is wrong with it. They are turning what God has instituted and called sacred, turning it into some kind of perversion. Like there's something wrong with you if you feel like you should live with just your wife. Or just your husband. Something wrong with you. No, there ain't nothing wrong with you. You're doing what's right. But man has it in him to do wrong. And the longer we go, the worse we seem to get. I don't understand this. Man is smarter than he's ever been. We have access to more information than we've ever had. Matter of fact, in the book of Daniel, it says, knowledge shall increase. It's increasing. But men are getting more and more and more wicked. How is this? How is it that we can become smarter and yet we're building bigger prisons every year? Something is wrong. Matter of fact, I, I read an article. Uh, I read an article on the news about in Chicago they go through and they take a census in the senior classes and see how many senior students they have every year because they know a certain percentage of them are going to be in prison. And so they adjust prison sizes based on high school size, high school senior class sizes. That's crazy. It's crazy that we understand so much and yet we are still so bad. You know why? Because the only fix to the problem is salvation. People are trying to change culture. They're trying to get, how do you regulate, how do you legislate somebody to not be prejudiced against somebody else? You can't pass laws that make people love each other. I don't care how you, hard you try. They're doing all kinds of things. They're trying to change the mindset of children in college to try and make them feel like everybody should be included. No matter what their orientation sexually is, no matter what their color is or their religion. And they get into all of this and you can do all that you want, but you can't change the heart of people. There's only one thing that can change man's heart, and that's the Spirit of God. That's talking about those that are not saved. Those who are not filled with the spirit of the Lord. They go astray. They speak lies. They judge wrongly. They, I, I, I just, and let me just say this, uh, and to give you an example. Jesus said, love your enemy. That's what Jesus said. I think if, I had a preacher one time in, in, in Lansing when I was in college, we was going to, to uh, Elder Warren's church, and this preacher said, if it ain't in red letters, I don't believe it. All right, well, if you were just a red letter person, Jesus said, love your enemies. I ain't no getting out of that. You, you can't escape what Jesus said. He said to love your enemies, and we got folks that are self-professed Christians, people who say they love God on on. Uh, social media talking about the man that killed the cop that killed that that man ah he needs somebody needs to get together we need to do some justice and go kill him how's that got anything to do with God Jesus said love your enemy okay now let me just be fair I know that there is milk 
in the word and there is meat in the word. Amen. Sometimes it's hard for us to receive meat. Loving your enemy is some meat. That, that takes some work. That takes some being obedient to the Holy Ghost. That takes some learning how to walk like Jesus walked. Learning how to talk like Jesus talked. That takes some prayer, some fasting, and some faithfulness to the word. I get that. And if you feel like you want to get even with somebody, keep it to yourself and keep praying and fasting till God help you get that out of you. With the people of God, though, I want to give an example of something that happened with the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and starting at verse number 17. He said this, When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? I'm going to explain it in just a minute. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preaching among you by us, Boy, some folks just caught that. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was all yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen unto the glory of God by us. Now let me just let me back up just a little bit and explain what is going on. The apostle Paul had it in his mind when he wrote 1 Corinthians. He told them, "On my way to Macedonia, I'm going to bypass. I'm going to detour a little bit and I'm going to stop in Corinth and visit the church. When I leave Macedonia to go back, I'm going to stop again and visit the church in Corinth. He had told them that. And so he said, when I purposed to do this, was I saying yes when I really meant no? Because at this point, he said, I can't come. I'm not able to come to Corinth. And they got upset with him and was accusing him of lying. But you said you were going to come. And he said, when I said it, was I saying yes just to make you feel better, but in my heart I really knew I meant no. I wasn't going to do it. That's why he said yay, yay, and nay, nay. He's saying, I wasn't saying yes when I meant no. I meant to do it. He's drawing this contrast between God and man. I meant to do it, but circumstances changed, and I couldn't do it. When I said yes, I didn't mean maybe. I meant yes, I'm going to do it. But things changed and I couldn't do it. All right. All right. He said, but I don't want y'all to get this thing confused and messed up. I don't want your mind to be messed up in this. When I said yes, I meant to, but I couldn't. But when God says yes, in him, yes is yes. If God says I'm going to do it, nothing can stop God from doing it. In him are all yay. God said, yes, I can do it. I'm going to do it. In him is amen. That means let it be settled. It is settled. When God said, I'm going to do this for you, it's settled. They can start to fight against you, but they can't stop you. The apostle John, Jesus had already told them when he was here, he told Peter, he was just making a statement. Some of you are not going to die. Peter said, well, if he's not going to die, what about me? And Jesus basically told him, mind your own business. What I said to him ain't got nothing to do with you. But let me tell you how you're going to die. Now, he told him John wasn't going to die. So a group of people got together and took him and put him in a pot of boiling water, a boiling oil, because they wanted to kill him. They poured the oil out. John's still alive. You know why? Because in him, when he says yay, it's yay. He said, you're not going to die like these are going to die. He, you're not going to be martyred. You will die the death of a natural man. So they tried to kill him on more than one occasion. 
and they couldn't kill him. You know why? Because when God says something, you can't change God. You can't go around God. You can't make God look bad because once he says it, it's settled. Once he says it, it's a man. Ain't no more fighting, no more arguing, no more changing. When God says, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. All the promises of God are yes. God promised that they that lived in, in Jesus, lived in Christ Jesus, would suffer persecution. That's a yes. Okay, I can see I can get no amens on that one. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Listen, it's all true. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's a promise. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try you. That's a promise. There are going to be some fiery trials that are going to try you. The Apostle Paul wanted to go to the church of Corinth on his way to Macedonia, but he couldn't do it. He was sidetracked. He wanted to. God said no. And as far as God is concerned, once I say what it is, that's what it is. God said no. He, matter of fact, Paul said at one point, I had it in my heart to come to Jerusalem, but the Lord wouldn't let me. He wasn't ready. It took 11 years before he was able to go to Jerusalem. 11 years into his ministry before he was able to do what he had in his heart to do. When God makes plans, it's settled. When man makes plans, it's not. The reason why is because God is not a man. You can't compare God to what people do. People promise and can't fulfill it. But God, he's not like you. When God says, I'm going to do it, nothing can stop him. Human intentions are not like God's intentions. With God, it's yes. With man, it's maybe. With God, it's yes. With man, I'll try. With God, I'm going to do it. With man, I'm going to stop you. If, if God said no, God told uh, Ananias, he said, when the apostle Paul, when Saul comes, I'm going to show him many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul suffered for the name's sake of the Lord. But at one point, he, God had already said, he's going to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Yeah. I'm going to use him to bring in the other people that were not a part of my flock talking about the Jews. I'm going to use Paul to do that. But there was a group of men that got together, I think it was 70, that got together and decided, we're going to fast until we kill Paul. We're not going to eat anything till we kill Paul. But God had already established what Paul was going to do. Now they had made up their mind, I'm going to do everything I can to stop this man. They fasted. And they either broke their fast and went on and started eating, or they died from starvation. But they didn't kill him. You know why? Because man says what he wants to do, and if God says no, it's still no. I don't care if you fast for it. I don't care if you pray for it. You're not going to undo God. All right. All right. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, this is my final scripture. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 4, he says this. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now, well, all, let me just say this. Let God be true. Right. Now, that's, that's just a fact. God is true. Right. And I know that there are times when people get so hurt, they feel like God tricked them. He doesn't have to trick you. I don't, I don't know how to better express that. God doesn't have to trick anybody. Amen. He made you. He can just say, you don't exist no more, and you're gone. That's, that's, he doesn't have to be slick, and, and, and he doesn't have to try and do something sneaky. He doesn't have to make a promise and then come back and try to figure out how to get out of it. He doesn't have to do all of that. And I know there are some people that are confused because in the book of Genesis, it says that it, that it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And they act like, well, see, God's got feelings like you do. No, he doesn't. That's not talking about how grieved God is. It's talking about how bad you are. That's all. When it says it grieved him at his heart, this is talking about, look at how bad you are. 
come on, if there's some parents in here, y'all know what I'm talking about. Sometimes your kids cut up. They do, and you're like, I can't believe they did that. It doesn't mean that you're sitting around talking about, I wish I'd have never had no kids. He's not, it's not like that. It's like, I can't believe you did that. And it said that the Lord repented. He repented the Lord that he made man. It doesn't mean that God was sorry. The word repent doesn't mean to be sorry. Sorrow means to be sorry. But to repent means to turn and change direction. So when it said that God, it repented the Lord, it just means he started dealing with man in a different way. That's all. And shame on us how bad we are. Shame on humanity for how bad they are. It's, it's got nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with us. So he said, let God be true. Now, if there's nothing else that you can hang your hat on in life, you can hang it on that. God is true. Now, you might not like it because with God being true, he also says there are some punishments that go along with not being obedient to him. That's true, too. See, we want to just grab all the good stuff, you know, all the goodies. Ah, I'm, the Lord's going to bless me to have some money. He never promised you no money. The Lord's going to bless me with a bigger house. He never promised you a bigger house. And when he said that, 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 that uh, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house for many mansions, he is not in heaven building houses for people. I heard somebody say that one time. You know, he, Jesus came here and his father was a carpenter because he had to learn how to build houses so he could go back to heaven and build mansions for people. He ain't building no mansions. That's not what he was talking about at all. Who was the father's house? Jesus. Jesus was the house that the Father dwelt in. In him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Another scripture talks about us being the temple. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? We are, we are the mansions that are in the Father. Now we are in Christ. He's not up there with a hammer and nail building houses for people. We're not going to be restricted. I mean, can you imagine going to heaven and I'm, I, well, I'm in my house today. I'm outside more of my golden grass. No, it's not like that. That's just misinterpreting the scripture. But let every man a liar. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Now, don't take the scripture to mean that it's okay for you to lie because it said every man a liar. He didn't say let every man be a liar. He said when it comes down to it, if God says something and you say something and it doesn't happen, it's because you lied, not God. That's what that's talking about. It doesn't mean it's okay for you to go out and tell some lies and say, well, you know what? The Bible says every man a liar. And he's not saying that. He's saying when it's, if you're comparing you to God, God is true and you not. See, people lie on God all the time. People lie about God all the time. That's why we got so many different religions, because people lying about God. He didn't intend for it to be like that. God never intended for it to be all of this confusion going on in the world as far as God is concerned. But you know why there is? Because people lie about God. But one thing is for sure, God is true. Men are liars, but not God. God doesn't have to lie. He doesn't have to lie to you. I mean, uh, things are different now today. Things, are, things have changed. When my children were little... I didn't have to lie to them about nothing. I just tell them, this is what it is. Now, and if they wanted to get upset about it, tell them, well, go in your room then. Hey, Amen. My daughter's sitting here. She knows. <laughs> I would do that. We're going to go to McDonald's later on in the day. Now, they're cutting up all day. I'm like, okay, we ain't going to McDonald's. But you said we're going to McDonald's. Well, we're not going now. Yeah. I didn't have to come up with no lie. Well, you know, McDonald's is... They, they're having trouble. I looked it up. They're having trouble, so we're not able to go today. I don't have to do that. You know why? Because I'm the boss. I don't have to lie to you. I don't have to trick you. The answer is no. But you said we was going to get new shoes for school. Now you're wearing your raggedy shoes. I don't have to trick you. You're not getting them. And unless you get a job, you still ain't getting them. 
So I, I'm just telling it the way it, the way it is. I'm telling it like it T-I-S. T-I is, yes. Uh, that's just the way it is. And I raised my children that way. I, you know, I know people do it different now. But I didn't care if you had a job. Good for you. You don't own the house. You ain't paying the mortgage. So if, if you want to have it your way, I, mean, I, I remember telling each one of my kids as they got older and started getting a little frisky, if free is not cheap enough for you, Go someplace and pay for it. I'm paying for this. That's my dresser. You didn't buy that dresser. I bought the dresser. See, that's, that's when you are in control. And if they wanted to leave, they could. I wasn't going to fall out on the floor. Okay, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. I changed my mind. I wasn't doing that. I knew I paid for it. It's my stuff. I knew that. Amen. Now, again, they're doing a difference today. They're negotiating. they got parents being held hostage by their kids and all that. I never tolerated that foolishness. I was not being held hostage by no child. And, and, but let me just say it for this. I brought all that for this reason. God doesn't have to either. He don't have to lie to you. He just tell you no in the first place. If you don't plan on doing it, you just say no. I know. I asked God. I tried my best to negotiate with God. When I felt like I had a call to the ministry, I'm like, Lord, you must have made a mistake. It's not me. The feeling didn't go away. I said, well, Lord, if, if you had called me to the ministry, and I'm not admitting that you did, but if you called me to the ministry, if you let me out of it, I would do, and I was negotiating with God. You know what he said? Absolutely nothing. He didn't negotiate with me. He didn't allow me to get out of what he wanted me to do. I know folks say that all the time. If you don't do what God tells you to do, he'll get somebody else to do it. No, he won't. He'll get you to do it. If you don't believe it, ask Jonah. Jonah got into a boat and went the opposite way of where God told him to go. And when God got finished with him, brother went right on up into Nineveh and started preaching. He tried to get out of it. You ain't going to get out of what God wants you to do. You're going to do it. He doesn't have to negotiate with us. He doesn't have to do what you say do. And he doesn't even have to give you a reason why I'm not going to do what you say do. You're just going to do it. Amen. You know why? Because God's not a man. He's not a man. He's not going to sit around and play with us like we play with each other. He's not going to do that. No, 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 no. When he says it, that's it. Now, you can bounce around and cut up and clown all you want to, but you ain't changing God one little bit. You can go tell all your friends, and people do that. They go tell all their friends. You know, they upset because God wouldn't do something for them, and they want to tell their friends as if, if I tell enough people, then God will change his mind. All you're doing is just talking. That's all. You ain't changing God because you mad. All right. God is not a man, y'all. God doesn't have to do things the way we say. But remember this. He's not a man. And what he says is true. Good and bad. What he promises he's going to carry forth, good and bad. He's going to do it. It's up to us whether we want to fall in line and be obedient to God or whether we want to test him. Amen. Amen. Man, I had a child that used to do that all the time. She was always testing. One time I called them all from the back of the room, gave them all a whipping. Now, I done spanked all of them. They all standing there crying. All of them, just crying. And I, now I'm scolding them afterwards. I've already told you don't make no noise. I've already told y'all to be quiet. Now, if you can go back in the bedroom and y'all can play quietly, then you can keep it. And, and, and one of them was doing this. Crying, but starting to aggravate her sister. I whipped her again and told her, now you go to bed. <laughs> See, some folk going to test God. Some people going to try him. You can try him if you want to. But when he gets finished with you, you finished. Amen. The best thing to do is to get with his program. Life is so much easier when you do what God tells you to do. Amen. All right, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, it's time for us to go. Hey, come stand up on your feet.